Hi Team Grade 5, it's your self-proclaimed favorite mathematics teacher, Miss Aaliyah Brewster. Welcome to another edition of Grade 5 Mathematics. Today's topic is adding and subtracting mass. To begin, we're going to define mass. Mass is the quantity of matter in an object. In everyday life, mass is often called weight, but mass and weight are not the same. The weight of an object changes according to gravity, but its mass remains the same. For example, a brick would be weightless in space even though it still has the same mass as on Earth. Now let's move on to the various units of mass. First, we're going to discuss milligrams. Milligrams are represented by mg. This is the smallest unit used to describe the measurement of mass. When you think of milligrams, think of the weight of a feather or a pill, because pills or tablets are usually measured in milligrams. There is also grams. Grams are represented by the letter G, and a gram is equivalent to a thousand milligrams. Whenever you think of grams, think of a paper clip. Moving on, there's also kilograms, which is represented by the letters K and G. One kilogram is equal to a million milligrams or 1,000 grams. An example of kilograms would be the size of a watermelon or a pineapple or even a textbook. How do we know the mass of an object? There are various instruments that can be used to measure the mass of an object, namely scale. Scales can be found in our home and shops. There is the balance scale. There's also the kitchen scale, the triple beam balance, and the hanging scale. To measure the mass of an object using a scale, we place the object into a pan. Next, we look to see where the hand or arrow is. This will indicate the mass of the object. For example, the pumpkin on the scale has a mass of 4 kilograms. The balance scale operates a little differently. It can be used to compare two different objects or it can be used to weigh an object if one side has the object and the other side has the equivalent amount of mass. In this case, one side of the balance scale has a sack of potatoes while the other side has seven one kilogram weights on it. This means that the sack of potatoes has a mass of seven kilograms. I think it's time for you to try your first activity on your own. Using the diagram, I would like you to identify the mask of the bag of rice. When you're finished, I'll be back to discuss with you. Did you get it correct? Let's verify. Looking at the balance scale, we have one side with a bag of rice and the other side has five one kilogram weight. 
This means that the bag of rice has a mass of five kilograms. So if you guess five kilograms, then you are correct. Well done. Let's move on to discuss converting units of measure. Conversion is a change in the form of units without a change in the size or amount. For the conversion of standard units of mass, it's very important to know the relationship between the units of mass. For example, we know that 1000 grams is equivalent to one kilogram. This means that if we were to take two objects, one that has a mass of one kilogram and another that has a mass of a thousand kilograms and put both of those objects on a balance scale, the scale would remain balanced. One would not outweigh the other because 1000 grams is equivalent to one kilogram, even though the two units are different. With that in mind, let's work some examples to help us understand how to convert the various units of measure. To begin, we're going to learn how to convert kilograms into grams, or the large unit of mass into a smaller unit of mass. To convert kilograms into grams, we multiply by 1000, or we can write three zeros towards the right of the number. For example, if we were asked to convert 28 kilograms into grams, how would we do this? We multiply 28 by 1000. Why? Because 1 kilogram is equivalent to 1000 grams. So we multiply 28 by 1000 and that would give us 28,000 grams. Therefore, 28 kilograms is equivalent to 28,000 grams. Let's work another example. If we were asked to convert 12 kilograms and 58 grams into grams, we would first need to convert the 12 kilograms into grams and add 58 to it. You see, this example is different from the other one because not only are we given the mass in kilograms, but we are also given grams. So how do we go about doing this? We'll begin by converting 12 kilograms into grams. To do this, we're going to multiply 12 by 1,000. That would give us 12,000 grams. Then we add 58 to it. So in total, 12 kilograms and 58 grams is actually equivalent to 12,058 grams. There's also another method of conversion. Let's work another example to understand this. A pineapple has a mass of 2.12 kilograms. We have to find the mass in grams. So they're asking us here to convert 2.12 kilograms into grams. We know that one kilogram is equivalent to 1000 gram. So to multiply or to convert the two, we simply move the decimal point three places to the right, to the right, okay? So right now the decimal point is between two and one. So we move it one, two, three. Therefore, 2.12 kilograms is actually equivalent to 2,120 grams because when we move those points three places, the point goes behind zero. Okay, so it's that simple. Now let's do some examples to help us understand how to convert grams into kilograms. In other words, we're converting a small unit of mass into a large unit of mass. To do this, we have to divide by 1,000 because remember, one kilogram is equivalent to a thousand gram. Let's work some examples. The first example, how many kilograms are there in 7,000 grams? To do this, we're going to divide 7,000 by 1,000, okay? 7,000 divided by 1,000 is 7. Therefore, 7,000 grams is equivalent to 7 kilograms. Let's work another example. How many kilograms are there in 
18,500 grams. Okay, how many kilograms are there in 18,500 grams? To do this, we simply divide 18,500 by 1,000. We'll arrive at an answer of 18.5. Therefore, 18,500 grams is the same as or equal to 18.5 kilograms. Let's work one more example. For this example, we're asked to find the mass of a squirrel in kilograms. The squirrel has a mass of 365 grams. Okay, to do this, we're going to do the point shifting method. So we know that the mass of the squirrel in grams is 365. Now that is a whole number and every whole number has a point at the back of it. Whether or not it is written in, it is understood that every whole number has a point at the back of it. Therefore, there is an invisible point behind five. So we're going to move that point three places to the left because we're dividing, okay? Why are we dividing? Because we're converting grams into kilograms. So we have to divide. So we move our point three places to the left. We go one, two, three. Our answer then would be zero, and we write zero to make sure that our point is highlighted. So we have 0 0.365 kilograms. Therefore, 365 grams expressed in kilograms is 0 0.365 kilograms. Let's dive into how to add mass. Very simple. For our first example, we're going to add 7 kilograms, 350 grams, plus 2 kilograms and 150 grams. Looking at that problem, you would notice that we have two units of mass each. Okay, so we're working with kilograms and grams. To do this, we're going to look at a method called the conversion method, whereby we convert all the units of mass into one unit, which is gram. We know, boys and girls, that one kilogram is equivalent to a thousand grams. With that in mind, let's begin by converting the first one or the first units into grams. So we have seven kilograms, 350 grams. So let's convert the kilograms into grams first. To do this, we multiply seven by 1,000. Okay, this would give us 7,000. And to 7,000, we're going to add the 350 grams. When we add those two, we have 7,350 grams. Okay, now let's convert the second units. We have two kilograms and 150 grams. Okay, to make it simpler, we're going to convert the two kilograms first. To do this, we multiply 2 by 1,000, that would give us 2,000, and to that we add the 150 grams. That would give us 2,150 grams. So here we have 7,250 grams and 2,150 grams. Now that both of our add-ins are in the same units of mass, it's safe for us to add. So we're going to set them up one beneath the other and we're going to add. We add from the right moving to the left. So zero plus zero is zero. We write that at the bottom. Five plus five is 10, but we cannot write 10 in our answer section. We have to put the 10 outside because it's a double digit number. So we scratch off the zero, put the zero there, and we write the one at the top and we're going to add that to the next column. Therefore, three plus one plus the one at the top, not forgetting that, is equal to five. And then we're going to add seven plus two, which is equal to nine. Therefore, our answer here would be 9,500 grams. And if we wish to express it or to break it up into kilograms and grams, we can simply say, 9,000 kilograms, 500 grams. Okay, so that's our answer. There's also another method of doing this. 
This one, it does not involve conversion. We simply set our, our addends as they are, dividing them into kilograms and grams. So looking at the same problem, we're going to work. We have one column that is set for kilograms and another column that is set for grams. So we set them up and we begin to add. We're adding from the, the right, moving to the left. Okay, so here we go. We're going to add the grams first. So zero plus zero is zero. Five plus five is 10. We put the zero there and add the one to the other column. So we have three plus one plus the one. That would give us five. So the grams, the total amount of grams is 500. Well done. Let's move on to add the kilograms. We have seven plus two. That would give us nine. Therefore, our answer is nine kilograms, 500 grams. It's time for you to try an activity on your own. What is the sum of six kilograms, 135 grams, plus 11 kilograms, 950 grams. Work this without conversion. So you set it up in the method that does not involve the conversion. Okay, best of luck. When you're finished, I'll be back to discuss with you. Were you able to get it correct? Let's verify. I ask you to find the sum of six kilograms, 135 grams, and 11 kilograms, 954 grams. Okay, and we're not doing the conversion method. So for this method, we're going to separate the kilograms and the grams. Let's begin by adding the grams. We're going to add five plus four is nine, 3 plus 5 is going to give us 8, and then 9 plus 1, okay, 9 plus 1 is going to give us 10. Now, 10 is a whole number or a double digit number, and we are going to write that number to the outside using the ones figure, which is 0. We're going to put that in the column and then take the 1 over to kilograms, okay? So now let's add the kilograms. 11 plus 6 plus the one at the top that we brought over from the gram is equal to 18. Therefore, our answer is 18 kilograms, 89 grams. Okay, 18 kilograms, 89 grams. If you got that answer, awesome. Well done. Now let's move on to subtracting mass. Subtracting mass is quite similar to adding mass. The only difference is that we're subtracting, okay? So of course, there are two methods here that we can use to subtract mass. We're going to first examine the method of conversion into grams. Therefore, we're going to work an example. We're asked to subtract 11 kilograms, 460 grams, from 25 kilograms, 765 grams. So looking at that problem, we have two units of mass that are being used, but we can convert all of those units into grams to make it easier for us to subtract, okay? So let's take it one step at a time. 
we're going to begin by converting the 11 kilograms, 460 grams, into grams. To do this, let's convert 11 kilograms into grams first. We're going to multiply 11 by 1,000. That would give us 11,000. And to that, we're going to add 460. Therefore, the total amount of grams there would be 11,460. Now let's convert the second part of our problem into grams, okay? So we have 25 kilograms and 765 grams. To begin, we're going to convert the 25 kilograms into grams. We're going to multiply 25 by 1,000. That will give us 25,000. And to that, we're going to add 765. That would give us a total of 25,765 grams. Now that we have both of our numbers written in grams, it is safe for us to subtract. So we're going to subtract from right going to left. So we start. Zero from five is five. Six from six is zero. Four from seven is three. One from five is four. And one from two is one. So our answer is 14,305. We're going to convert that back into kilograms and grams. That would give us 14,000 kilograms, 305 grams. If you're not comfortable with that method, of course, there's the other method that does not involve conversion. Instead, we're simply going to rearrange our problems into two different columns. You would observe that we have both of our numbers separated into two columns, kilograms and grams. It is safe for us to subtract. We're going to subtract the grams first. So we're going to work from left going to right. Here we have 5 subtract 0 would give us 5. 6 subtract 6 is 0. 7 subtract 4 is 3. So when we subtract our grams, our answer is 305. Now let's move on to kilograms. We're subtracting 11 from 25. That would give us an answer of 14. So our answer here is 14 kilograms, 305 grams. And it's that simple, boys and girls. Now it's time for you to try an activity on your own. What is the difference between 21 kilograms, 370 grams from 37 kilograms, 675 grams? You are not using the conversion method. You're using the other method that we just did. Best of luck. When you're finished, I'll be back to discuss with you. Okay, boys and girls, let's verify your answer. To begin, I hope you would have separated or divided your numbers into kilograms and grams, right? Once you would have done that, it is organized and ready for us to do our subtraction. So we're going to subtract the grams column first. So we have 675 subtract 370, okay? When we do it, we're going to work from right going to left. We're starting. 5 subtract 0 is 5. 
7 subtract 7 is 0, 6 subtract 3 is 3. So when we subtract our grams, our product that is left is 305, okay? Now let's move on to subtract our kilograms. 37 kilograms subtract 21. This would give us a total of 16. So our answer is 16 kilograms, 305 grams. Okay, boys and girls, that would have brought us to the end of our lesson. Thank you once again for tuning in and remember the words of Paul Halmos. The only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. This means that even though our study time would have come to an end, this does not mean that you have to stop practicing. If you wish to be successful at your upcoming exam, continue to practice. Thank you once again for tuning in and goodbye.